We did not know anything about my grandfather's service. Um, Shane brought his story to life for our family. So in a very real sense, he is the personification of Doc Rowe um, in World War II. There hasn't been and probably will never be as great a responsibility in doing a role than what we had to do in that show. You're not thinking about where this could all lead. You're just focused on what you have to do as a character in this part of the story. And HBO were very good at bringing it in so you're focused without any outside distractions. Um, um, also, uh, recently, we, uh, I, we did a, a, a convention in Cleveland, and the cast, you were there, weren't you? The casting director, Meg Lieberman, was there, and it was fascinating to hear her mm. take on who they cast and why, and it was very specifically, they cast actors that would be able to do what Shane did as Doc Rowe, that didn't have, because sometimes you need someone with a big ego as a leading man, you know? Mm. Someone who's charismatic and leading. Nobody on the show had an ego, I don't think, at all. It was all about giving up just to play these characters. It's a very specific type of person was cast. Um, and they could have gone really namey. Yeah. They could have had many, many more bigger names. But I think not that just was, me. Not just you. <laughs> but I think that's the, that's the strength of the show. It wasn't just him. Yeah. You know, there were other unknown people uh, like doing he, it. Yeah. And then as, a, as an audience, you know, you're, you, you're, you can invest more in that rather than with all due respect. It's not Tom Cruise playing somebody, you know. You could, you could teach history from it. If you were teaching uh, about the Battle of Bastogne or Foire or Hagen, you could, you could use it as, because it's so well researched. I mean. Well, the, and the other thing is that, you know, it's not, a, it's not an action show. It's not an action mm -hmm. flick, right. you know. It's not an Arnold Schwarzenegger, everything's blowing up constantly. You get that, but you get it from, I think, a more personable point of view. You feel what those guys feel. Um, you feel the bullets, but you feel the emotion, right? So you feel what these guys are going through. You feel the, the, her, the heroics when they're heroic. You see the fear when they're afraid. Um, you see the cold and the tired. Mm -hmm. So it teaches you about the war, but much more from a human point of view. So then I think these guys' passion, um, you become, as Shane said, emotionally involved. You want to see Talbert and Roe succeed, but then you, you struggle when they struggle and you hurt when they hurt. It's like, like we're the little kids, the actors, and then these are like, the big guys are invited. Like we got these, one of the guys. These are our heroes. It's like the big boys, yeah. like, like the big brothers are there. Like they're the cool guys and we're just like these, you know, guys who just messed around wearing makeup. Yeah. But like the veterans and the families and stuff, that's, that's well, where it's really cool. And when we started to meet the families and when I met Chris for the first time in Paris, I mean, that's when it really took off for me. And, and, and that relationship, our relationship has just grown. And he's my brother, we call each, you know, I'm brother Shane, he's brother Chris. We have been here yeah, five, it has to be. Yeah. five times. Yeah. We've been to Normandy and Bastogne together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I flew out when the premiere happened in Los Angeles and we spent a week in Los Angeles, you know, after mm -hmm. it came out. So Shane and I have been fortunate, um, blessed yes. to have a relationship. And so it's, it, it's an immensely important um, for me to have Shane in my life. Yeah. You know, Shane, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Shane gave me my grandfather. I know my grandfather from watching Shane. So, you know, when I first met the actors, and, and I, I didn't know them from Adam, you know, in 2001, and I would say, you know, I'm Chris, I'm a grandson of Doc Rowe. And then they would shake my hand back at me <laughs> like I had done something <laughs> when I had done nothing, but they, know who, they knew who Doc Rowe was from the interviews and the research. So they had a huge amount of respect for Doc Rowe that I knew nothing about. Great thing with the veterans is if you ask them about their involvement, they, it's all humble. They're, you know, I was just one small part, it was just a little bit, you know, I just did my job. But then they see themselves on the screen, they like, did you see my character in that scene? <laughs> I was good, like, they're, like the gag to play in them. They love that, they love that they've been portrayed and stuff. But then themselves, they don't want, they don't want to talk about you it. You know, your mission to record these stories is important. 
um, it's vitally important when you when you see what goes on. You wonder why are we repeating the mistakes that we we had mm -hmm. 70 years ago. We see in our country's mindsets and beliefs that my grandfather came over here and fought against. You mm -hmm. know, why are we why are we revisiting these same mistakes? And so, if we do not educate and we do not share these stories, not only will kids not appreciate what they have. But they will become the adults to make the same the same bad decisions. So everything that we do is to honor the men, tell the story, don't let these things happen again, but never mm -hmm. forget what we were given and what we enjoy today. Yeah. And I'd like to yeah. say that the people of Bastogne are a lot like the people of Normandy, show amazing uh, a grasp of the history and an amazing appreciation of what happened. Mm -hmm. And it's it's very humbling to meet the people, how much it means to them. Mm -hmm. It's great. Keep it up. Yes. Yeah. What can I add to that? <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. <laughs>